2003 would see some of the closest racing Formula 1 had seen since the late 1990s. A major overhaul of the regulation shook up the sport and nearly produced a shock world champion. The old qualifying format with a single one hour session of 12 flying laps was replaced by a single lap format with one car occupying the track during every run. The new qualifying format was split into two sessions. The first session took place on Friday with the championship leaders coming out first and the back markers last with minimal fuel loads. The slowest from the first session would therefore come out first for the second session on Saturday with the fastest Friday qualifiers appearing last but this second session came with a twist. Cars had to carry their fuel loads and the tyres they had they would start the race with. Pit to car telemetry was restricted and a new point system was implemented with points now going down to 8th place. A key change of this new point system however was the gap between 1st and 2nd places was closed to within a couple of points with 8 points given to 2nd place instead of, two, instead of 6. But the race leaders, the race winners, would remain being awarded with 10 points. Using the crystal score system, I have graded every participating driver with a score out of 10 for every race they complete, at least 75% distance. If a driver fails to finish a race because of a mechanical failure or an accident via no fault of their own, their score for that particular race is excluded from their season's average score and is considered invalid and void. However, numerous exceptions can be made to the rule if a driver is struck by bad luck or if they are involved in unsporting behaviour. Drivers may escape being scored points if they finish in a lowly position due to a problem that was unrelated to their own driving or they may be awarded a score if they produced an amazing an amazing performance before retiring before the 75% distance. From every eligible point score their scores are added up into an aggregate score and then divided by the number of races they achieved a score. For example, Alan McNish scores 75 points for his season's total score whereby his score of 75 is divided by the 11 races he finishes. This gives him a crystal score average of 6.82. There were Four reserve drivers who appeared late in the season due to injuries and sackings during 2003. First of these was Denmark's Nicholas Chiesa who drove the final five races for Minardi when Justin Wilson departed for Jaguar. Chiesa made no impression despite entering F1 with a few promising F3000 displays and never returned to Grand Prix racing after the season ended. Second was Zolt Baumgartner who remains Hungary's only F1 driver to date. He made his debut at his home race at Hungary thanks to Ralph Furman's ferocious practice impact but he failed to excite any fans as his subsequent appearance at Monza saw him follow team leader Jay Carlo home in 11th place. Third to appear was Mark Janay, who deputised for a concuss Ralph Schumacher at the Italian Grand Prix, where the Spaniard finished a respectable fifth place. The final substitute was Takuma Sato, who made a cameo at his home race at Suzuka, finishing in 6th place as Jacks Wilder's replacement. 20. Antonio Pizzonia D. Jungle Boy made his Grand Prix debut for Jaguar after displaying unrelenting commitment as a test driver for Williams 
but Pisonia did not display the attributes required for an F1 race driver. Up against a ruthless Mark Webber, it can be argued Antonio was treated poorly by Ford's management, who apparently admitted they wanted to replace the Brazilian as early as the Spanish Grand Prix. Early accidents at Sapan and Interlagos did not help his confidence, and it was clear the team's management were not interested in supporting Bitsonia. It came as no surprise when Justin Wilson was signed as the Amazonian's native successor post Silverstone, but Antonio would return in the following two seasons as a stand-in at Williams. 19. Nick Heidfeld, D+. A real sense of stagnation crept in for Quick Nick, who appeared demotivated by his surroundings at the Hinville outfit. With his former teammates Massa and Raikkonen off to greener pastures, as Ferrari test driver and McLaren lead driver respectively, the German was a fa pale shadow of his former self. Heidfeld edged veteran teammate Hype Frentzen 8-7 in qualifying but the new rules mandating cars required to carry fuel and tyres into the race meant it was difficult to ascertain which driver possessed greater one lap speed. Sadly, Heidfeld scored just thrice with points at Sapang, Nürburgring and a fifth place at Indianapolis but he was upstaged by his retiring teammate who scored 13 points to Nick's meager 6. It appeared Heidfeld would disappear without a whimper, but a last-minute deal to race for Jordan was struck. 18. Jos Verstappen, D+. Jos de Boss returned to Grand Prix racing with Minardi after a year on the sidelines, but the 31-year-old Dutchman was past his best. He outqualified rookie teammates Justin Wilson 7-4 and... Nicholas Chiesa 5-0, but his legendary race pace was beginning to evaporate. The extraordinary Brazilian Grand Prix had seen Verstappen running ahead of eventual race winner Fisichella on an identical strategy, but the Dutchman would spin off 31 laps in. Jos would achieve an unrepresentative professional pole at the Friday qualifying session in France, but this was achieved thanks to the dry conditions that benefited the backmarkers who were last to appear. The Dutchman would quit Minardi at the end of 2003, slamming a lack of professionalism at Fianza and attempted to urge Eddie Jordan for a seat for 20, 2004, but the Dutchman, the Irishman, did not reciprocate any interest. Jos would never race an F1 after... 107 starts and 17 points. 17. Ralph Furman, D+. Representing Ireland, the Norfolk native carried St. Patrick's Trick Order as his nationality, but did little justice to it. Perhaps his six years in Japan had diminished Furman's feel for European tracks, but it was felt by many that Eddie Jordan had picked him out out of sentimentality rather than merit. Ralph displayed some promise at Spain where he dis he scored the only point of his career but his season spiralled downhill swiftly afterwards. The EJ13 chassis had little development as the team's limited funds restricted any potential for further points finishes and Ralph's and Furman's horrifying accident at Hungary saw him unable to race there and Monza. Sadly, with Jordan requiring pay drivers to continue the team's existence, the Irishman would never race an F1 again. 16. Jax Villeneuve, C. Like Heidfeld, the French-Canadian appeared also appeared out of sorts in his fifth year at British American Racing. With the team management changed beyond recognition from its original setup, Villeneuve labelled new teammate Jensen Button as a boy band member. With Honda now increasing their involvement in the Brackley-based squad, 
JV found himself outpaced consistently by JB and rumours of Jack stepping down at the end of the season came true. Takuma Sato was announced as 2004 race driver and even replaced Vilna for the season finale at France where Jack's allegedly called head management that he would re depart the team earlier than expected. The 1997 world champion would spend most of 2004 on the sidelines but returned at Renault late in the season. 15. Olivier Panis C. JV's fellow French speaker and ex-teammate moved to rivals Toyota for 2003 but it would prove to be yet another season to forget for the 1996 Monaco Grand Prix winner. Reliability was once again scuppered, Panis's hopes of a strong season and he struggled to keep up with new teammate Cristiano De Mata. He did show some of his own speed by qualifying third at Indianapolis, but the Frenchman would be left frustrated by Toyota's dreadful strategic decisions. Panis would continue for another year at the Cologne-based organisation. 14. Cristiano De Mata C. The 2002 car IndyCar champion would be the latest arrival to try his luck across the Atlantic and the Brazilian made a decent account of himself. Outscoring all the teammate Panis 10-6, the matter even led the British Grand Prix for 17 laps, albeit thanks to an impromptu safety car which appear appeared after Neil Horan ran across the track with a banner. The matter would be classified in 13 race finishes and he impressed onlookers with his consistency and adaptability. 13. Justin Wilson C. This Sheffield native made his Grand Prix debut for Minardi where he impressed pundits with his determination and never say die attitude. The 25 year old retired from the first four races, one of which he was forced to retire due to severe cramp at Malaysia. Once he'd gone over his reliability votes, the 2001 F3000 champion began to outpace teammate Jos Verstappen and he switched to Jaguar post Silverstone. Despite succeeding to cram his 6 foot 4 inch frame into the R4 chassis, Wilson failed to impress Ford as he was annihilated by his new teammate, Mark Webber. With Ford decreasing funding, Wilson could not fund his F1 future adventure any further from his invested Wilson company and he left the sport to go stateside. After clocking up seven wins in the IndyCar series, the Briton was tragically killed at Pocono in 2015. 12. Ralph Schumacher C. 2003 would prove to be an exasperating year for the younger Schumacher brother who started the season under fire from Frank Williams for his wavering commitment and marital issues. However, by mid-season, Ralph would hit a strong run of form with second at Canada and two wins on the bounce at the Nürburgring and Manicor. Three ball positions in the space of four races would indicate at Ralph's improvement in qualifying trim but any further improvements were curtailed with his own inconsistency. Lamentably the 28 year old was the culprit of a start line collision at Hockenheim where he collected Rubens Barrichello, Kimi Raikkonen and a few back markers. This landed him an initial punishment of, t of a 10th place grid drop for Hungary but an appeal saw this replaced by a hefty fine instead. A testing crash at Monza ended the German's title challenge and concluded his season with two underwhelming drives at Indy and Suzuka. 11. Jarno Trulli C. The Italian qualifying master suffered another year of mediocre race performances where he was outraced by new teammate Fernando Alonso. Despite scoring 10 times over 2003, 
criticisms began to mount against Trudy as it was apparent his enormous potential was not delivering results. It appeared on occasions the 29-year-old was the architect of his own downfall, but a plucky third place at Hockenheim produced what was the only the second rostrum appearance of his career first fall. Nevertheless, he would continue at Reno for 2004. Number 10. Heinz Trentson say it would be the final season at the top tier of motorsport for the tomato ketchup namesake and despite his deteriorating motivation he did produce moments of his own magic. Starting the season well with 6th at Melbourne and 5th at Interlagos, the mid-season pace of Sauber's new C22 chassis was found to be lacking. A long slump was ended at Indianapolis where Frenson made use of Bridgestone's adept wet compounds and scored his final podium behind Schumacher and Raikkonen. Along with teammate Heidfeld finishing fifth, this fluke result secured Sauber a rather fortunate sixth place in the constructors. Number 9. David Coulthard C+. This twenty home native suffered a depressing season as he started the year off in fine style with what would be his final career victory at Melbourne. Misfortune at Sapang and Interlagos however saw DC cast into a supporting role as the Scotsman struggled to come to grips with the new one lap qualifying format. He later picked up podiums at Hockenheim and Suzuka but his disappointing mid-season form saw him classified a poor seventh in the driver's standings, while being struck with a two-year-old <laughs> being stuck with a two-year-old McLaren did little to help Coulthard's progress. It's arguable that he cost him a chance at a constructors' title as the Woking-based team finished just 16 points behind Ferrari. Number eight, Jensen Button B minus. Britain's next Grand Prix superstar had an adequate season as his move to BAR Honda saw him greeted with consternation from new teammate Jax Villeneuve. No love was lost when a miscommunication from the pit wall saw Button stacked up behind his Canadian teammate in Melbourne. As 2003 progressed, however, JB had Builder's numbers through most metrics and steered a Brackley team in his direction. A brilliant performance for Button and new teammate Takuma Sato at Suzuka saw them lift BAR into fifth in the constructor standings. Number seven, Rubens Barrichello B minus. Brazil's premier racing driver produced an audacious account of himself where he showed signs of being able to keep Michael Schumacher honest a lot more regularly. Barry Kennel would succeed in outqualifying his German team leader six times and picked up two exquisite victories at Silverstone and Suzuka. 2003 proved to be the clearest example of Ruby's utility as a number two to Schumacher. He would pick up the pieces when the maestro was having a bad day and prevented Raikkonen and Schumacher from and prevented Raikkonen and Van Pablo Montoya from making deeper inroads on Michael Schumacher. Having been the target of opprobrium for some time, Rubinho had validated himself as worthy of a top seat in this season alone. Number 6, Giancarlo Fisichella B. Despite being saddled with an underfunded and gutless car, the Roman continued to reiterate himself as one of the sport's best midfield drivers. It was scarcely believable that Fisichella was able to mix it with bare-funded opposition with his Ford-powered EJ13 chassis, but that's what the Italian pulled off. While some may point at the monsoon condition that was unleashed, into Logos as a way of detracting from his main maiden victory, the Jordan driver dragged his machinery to one of the most improbable upsets ever. Though he was fortunate to escape being collected by his spinning teammate Ralph Furman earlier on, 
Jake Cardo held on as various front runners such as Montoya and the Ferraris fell by the wayside and pounced when Raikkonen went wide before entering John Cow. Unsurprisingly, the car was never developed properly for the remaining races, so Fissi Keller grew tired of Eddie's excuses and departed to Sauber for 2004. Number 5. Mark Webber B. The 27-year-old Australian softball produced an even better season than his rookie year at Minardi. He obliterated stablemates Antonio Pizzonia and Justin Wilson with consummate ease and impressed Paddock insiders with his vocal leadership. Whilst the point, new point system brought Weber up into 10th place in the driver's standings, at least the Quibayan native had a championship position reflective of his excellent season, scoring points seven times during 2003. He was not, however, without his off days as a bogged down start at Imola wasted a strong qualifying slot of fifth. He would later dispose a potential point finish at Hockenheim when he crashed late in the race when he was chasing Jensen Button. Weber qualified in the top ten seven times and achieved a best grid slot of third twice at Brazil and Hungary. But bad luck and Jaguar's weak trackside operations meant his full potential was not fully unlocked. Number 4. Michael Schumacher B. 2003 was the year when Ferrari's greatest ever driver won his record-breaking sixth world title, but the season itself was one of his most erratic. Despite winning six races, five poles and five fastest laps, the maestro struggled mid-season as his bespoke Mitch Bridgestone tyres began to lag behind his rival's improving Michelin rubber. Schumacher began the season in a scruffy manner, losing out in straights with Raikkonen and Trudy at Australia and Malaysia, and then uncharacteristically spinning off at Brazil. The following five races saw the German claim four victories and recapture the championship lead, but he would never lead a title race by any more than nine points at any stage. A late race collision with arch enemy Montoya at the Nürburgring saw Schumacher's season spiral, and it was only thanks to team boss John Todd making a complaint to the FIA over Michelin's expanding compounds post-Hungary that saved their year. From being lapped by Fernando Alonso at Hungary, Schumacher returned to winning ways three laps three weeks later at Monza in front of the, Tifo, the adoring Tifosi. Rain at Indianapolis would see Montoya ruled out of a tight out of title contention mathematically, and fellow rival Kimi Raikkonen struggled on the new Michelin compounds as Michael won again and placed one hand on his sixth crown. However, Suzuka saw the German forced to run in treacherous wet conditions in qualifying and ended up starting 14th. The race itself was reflective of Michael's year as a whole. It was chaotic as he hit Brother Ralph and others, but also unleashed the F2003 GA's undoubted pace to cap off on a, a lofty record breaking championship triumph as the Red Baron stumbled home in 8th place. It must be noted had 2003 used the old point system of 8 6 points for 2nd and points allocated down to 6th Schumacher would have sealed his title at Indianapolis with a race to spare. <laughs> Number 3 Fernando Alonso A-. Minus. 2003 was the Oviedo's first real chance to display his full range of driving talents in a competitive car and boy did he show it. After a steady return to racing at Melbourne with 7th, the entire paddock was stunned when the 21-year-old became the sports den youngest pole sitter at Sapang, albeit on a light fuel load. 
He led the first 30 laps before pitting and his two-stop strategy landed his maiden podium finish of third. He followed this up with another podium result at Interlagos, but this time he was absent from the rostrum. He was taken to hospital for a checkup after being winded from a crash that truncated a Grand Prix held in appalling conditions, which was partially the result of trying to avoid Mark Webber's wreckage. His home race at Catalonia saw packed grandstands and he did not disappoint with a career best of second in scintillating the Spain, dicing with the Ferraris. Undoubtedly, the highlight of the season was his maiden Grand Prix win at Hungary, where he won by over 16 seconds against Kimi Raikkonen. Starting from pole for a second time that season, Alonso led every lap but won during the pit stops, and he was never troubled whatsoever. Markedly, though, there were streaks of the Spaniards' quarrelous and confrontational nature beginning to emerge, as Ross Braun revealed on ITV F1 about personnel at Renault confiding to him about Alonso's tendency to air his frustration publicly. Regardless, Fernando had crushed his more experienced teammate Yarno Trudy and displayed a level of driving consistency akin to someone 10 years older. Number 2. Juan Pablo Montoya A. 2003 would prove to be the Colombian's best season of F1, but third place in the championship for a second consecutive year was a bitterly disappointing result. Relations between his team Williams and their engine supplier BMW was beginning to deteriorate as it became clear Williams were struggling to improve their aerodynamics without their star designer Adrian Newey. Melbourne would see Montoya bottle a probable victory with a late race spin but he would salvage second. Sapang would see him unlucky to be struck by an errant Antonio Pizzonia leaving Wham to finish three laps down in 12th. Interlagos, Imola and Catalonia would all serve to heap up the pressure at the Grove based team but Austria would finally see Montoya back at the front. Unfortunately, an untimely BMW engine failure paid price to a win that could have mended Anglo-German relations earlier but Montoya would pull off an amazing eight race run where he finished on the podium every time and won at Monaco and Hockenheim. Scoring a gargantuan 64 points in his eight race cycle, the 27 year old entered Indianapolis just three points behind championship leader Michael. Sadly an early collision with Rubens Barrichello would see the Colombian slap with a drive through penalty and a premature secession of his title hopes. It's amazing to think, however, if anyone ha had predicted that this would be Juan Pablo's best season ever, they would have laughed, been laughed off. Despite securing only a single pole position all year, his consistency in the races had improved exponentially and better reliability at Austria and Japan could have seen Montoya crowned as Colombia's first world champion. And at number one, it is none other than Kimi Raikkonen with A+. 2003 would be the year when the Iceman legend would become established. Starting the year with an updated 2002 McLaren spec chassis, it was remarkable the Finn remained in title contention until the finale. It was made even more astonishing by the fact that Kimi's maiden career win at Sapang would be his only win of the season. His consistency was breathtaking, however, as Raikkonen claimed two seven second places and dragged his MP4 17D to pole position twice at the Nürburgring and Indianapolis. Sadly, it was the former of these two races that would witness a major blow to the Iceman's title hopes as he suffered an, un an untimely Mercedes-Ilmore engine failure whilst leading the European Grand Prix. 
Highlights of Raikkonen's 2003 included his battle with Michael Schumacher at the season opener at Melbourne, dominating Brazil until his late race mistake gifted Fisichella a shock win, holding off Barrichello's Ferrari at Austria and leading the British Grand Prix briefly before Barrichello and Montoya overhauled him. To illustrate the inferiority of McLaren's chassis to Ferrari's title winning cars, Kimi led only 138 laps to Michael's 303 in front, plus Kimi completed 136 laps fewer, fewer than Ferrari's lead driver in race mileage. Despite a season worthy of David versus Goliath, Kimi was not without his faults as mistakes on his qualifying laps at Spain and Canada left him starting last on a grid. Spain saw Kimi smash into the back of Antonio Pizzoni's store Jaguar on sighting at the start of the race, while Canada would witness the Iceman sustain a puncher while slicing past back markers, but gallantly fought back to sixth. However, the second half of the season would see Kimi struggle with an ageing chassis that saw limited development. McLaren continued working on the troublesome MP4 not 18 machine which was eventually scrapped by Monza due to chronic o overheating issues and failed crash test. Whilst many pundits herald Fernando Alonso's 2012 campaign with Ferrari, I personally believe Kimi Räikkönen's 2003 season was marvellous in, in its own merit. 2004 was the crowning jewel of Michael Schumacher's glittering career, racking up his seventh world championship. Despite this season having a superficial appearance of one-sided domination, the competition for best in the rest behind the German was arguably more fierce than 2003. This was the year when Jensen Button and his BAR team came of age as the British driver accrued 10 podiums and delineated himself as a star of the future. Renault brought themselves closer to the front, but internal strife would hit the Enstone-based team as one of their drivers was sacked before the season's end. McLaren and Williams took five ste steps back as poor chassis designs would destroy their, tab their title ambitions before the grid even landed in Melbourne. In addition, the FIA implemented new engine regulations which mandated every car's entry power plant must last an entire race weekend without being changed. Any engine changes in between any practice session, pre-qualifying and pre-race would incur a 10-place grid penalty. Essentially, 2004 would see the sport take its initial steps towards manufacturers creating mechanical parts built for longevity, something which is now commonplace if five reserve drivers would appear during this season. First was Timo Glock, who scored on his Grand Prix debut at Canada and then replaced Giorgio Pantano during the final three rounds at Jordan. Second was Mark Genet who stood in for Ralph Schumacher but his weak performances would see him replaced by, third, by a third reserve in Antonio Pizzonia who scored six points for Williams. Fourth was Ricardo Zonta who drove five races for Toyota and the final substitute was Jax Villeneuve who filled in at Renault for the final three rounds but scored no points. This list only includes drivers who started at least 10 races. 20. Giorgio Pantano E+. Despite a highly decorated karting career and multiple wins in Formula 3000, this Italian starlet never looked comfortable as a Formula 1 driver. Some believe Pantano was chucked into the deep end as he found himself up against a rejuvenated Nick Heidfeld, but the 25-year-old Padua native should have done a lot better. It is difficult to ascertain why he underperformed so badly, but one rumour hinted at pressures from his family to quit F1 early. They were the sole financiers of his F1 foray, 
so it's most likely they knew Georgia would struggle with Jordan's dreadful EJ14. If you type in Giorgio uh, Pantano 2004 San Marino lap on YouTube, you will witness the Italian hanging on for dear life in a car struggling with severe oscillations in its cornering rotations. He would never race in F1 again, but his four years in GP2 delivered a series title. 19. Jamboree Bruni D. Back when Italy had a surplus of Grand Prix talent, Minardi's new signing produced a pitiful sole campaign at the top level of motorsport. Whilst he comfortably outpaced teammate Salt Bamgartner, his mentality was rather ill-suited to the intensity of F1, and reports of Bruni falling out with team members surfaced. Unlike his teammate, the Italian failed to score a point and never raced in F1 again, but he has found success as an endurance racer for Porsche. 18. Zolt Babgarner D. Despite his reputation as a wealthy dilettante with no business in Formula 1, this Hungarian journeyman impressed onlookers with his diligence and willingness to learn. His humble outlook would pay dividends when the notorious attrition rate of Indianapolis gave Bamgartner the only point of his F1 career. It was also noted that his qualifying lap at a season-ending race at Interlagos was faster than Rubens Barrichello's 2003 pole lap in a Ferrari, proving how much the sport had developed in just 18 months. This Minardi driver made up for his deficit in talent with a graceful presence in the paddock, which has served him well as he now occasionally gives VIP guests a run out in F1 experiences to seat a car. 17. Christian Clean D. There were three things noticeable about the young Austrian as he made his Grand Prix debut. One was which he was a runner up in the previous. Formula 3 Euro Series campaign. Another was that he wore earrings and the last was that he carried sponsorship from Red Bull to his Jaguar seat. Sadly, the latter two of these attributes made the louder headlines as the 21-year-old found himself lagging behind Australian teammate Mark Webber. A tough learning spell eventually saw him re rewarded with sick at Spa Frankershaw but despite completing 15 races, barely any pundits were impressed. So it was very fortunate his sponsor Red Bull were announced as the purchasers of the, of the ailing Jaguar team, meaning Clean would race again in 2005. 16. Olivier Panis, C. The unfailingly luckless Frenchman finally f had his hands on a reliable chassis, but sadly, Toyota produced an overweight lump thanks to their conservative philosophy. Malaysia would see Panis go to log ahead of his team as the pit bull inadvertently called him for a pit stop late in the race, only to find no mechanics had even bothered to warm up. To exacerbate matters, the 37 year old was found to be infringing the pit lane speed limit so he had to return back to the pit lane for his drive through a disqualification at canada for failing scrutineering plus three points finishes was the tale of a miserable final campaign for panis who bowed out at suzuka he would continue as toyota's test driver for the next two years and now runs his own sports car team with world cup winner fabian bartes 15 cristiano de Mata c the second season of 2002 car indycar champions foray into f1 was a disaster as he only scored once at monaco his relationship with Toyota disintegrated as tensions boiled over the development of the chassis and the Brazilian's days were numbered. In contrast to his successful rookie campaign during the previous year, the matter was outqualified 7-4 and outscored 5-3 by teammate Olivier Panis. The matter, however, did finish in front of his Toyota rival four times in the five races they finished together, 
but Japanese bosses decided to cut him loose after Hockenheim. Cristiano returned to IndyCar racing the following year, but a life-threatening accident during testing in 2006 ended his motorsport career prematurely. 14. David Coulthard C. 2004 was the Scotsman's final year at McLaren and he bowed out without podium in a lax lustre year. Whilst the MP4-19 was so bad that the working Woking team built a B-spec chassis that appeared from the French Grand Prix onwards, DC looked a pale shadow of his former self. His only real highlight was qualifying third at Manicor, but the race itself was a disappointment as he finished sixth ahead of teammate Kimi Raikkonen. From this point onwards, his Finnish stablemate would annihilate Tim into submission and Coulthard's best result was fourth at Hockenheim. Despite some believing the 13-time Grand Prix winner's stock had dropped to zero, a last-minute rescue package by Red Bull meant the 33-year-old was handed a reprieve and joined the Milton Keynes-based organisation for 2005. 13. Felipe Massa C. The Sao Paulo native made a return to racing after a year of testing for Ferrari, but Sauber's hotshot proved he still needed a lot of rough edges ironing out. The 23-year-old proved a feisty combatant in midfield, with huge crashes in Canada and America proving Massa was still vulnerable to overstepping the limit on occasions. Nevertheless, 2004 was a vast improvement over his debut season two years prior and the Brazilian was rewarded with a contract renewal at Hinville for 2005. 12. Nick Heidfeld C. 2004 would provide a renaissance for the beleaguered Mönchengladbach native who had appeared to doze off at Salbert in the previous year with a wretched Jordan EJ14 chassis allied with an average Cosworth engine, quick nick, mesmerized onlookers with a dazzling display of speed. Qualifying in the top 15 seven times, he achieved a best qualifying result of 13th at the Nürburgring and even managed to outqualify Jaguar and Sauber on occasions. The German easily had the beating of rookie teammates Giorgio Pantano and Timo Glock and Heidfeld scored three points when brutal attrition at Monaco and Canada presented opportunity for points. Sadly, it was also Jordan's penultimate season in F1 as team, older, team owner Eddie sold his shares to the Midland Group, but Heidfeld was rewarded with a Williams seat for 2005. 11. Takuma Sato, C+. Receiving huge praise from journalists for efforts in 2004, it has to be said that Japanese driver's performance was overrated to an extent. It was possibly due to fans taking a real liking to the amicable 27-year-old who was the first truly exciting prospect to emerge from the land of the rising sun for some time. Saito's campaign was actually a topsy-turvy year where he had races of mouth-watering speed at the Nürburgring and Indianapolis, but he eventually settled into a supporting role to Jensen Button in the second half of 2004. Moments of overcommitment were also present as Sato blew his engine spectacularly at Monaco after a blindingly quick start, collided with Barrichello at the Nürburgring when he was running third, and got involved in the first lap pile-up at spa Francorchamps. The US Grand Prix would finally see Sato's determination come to fruition as he clinched this maiden podium behind the Ferraris. Honda Star Asset was handed a second year at BAR. Number 10. Ralph Schumacher 7.00 C+. The 29-year-old would suffer an annus horribilis as his trash at Indianapolis would see the German out of action for six races after sustaining back injuries. 2004 would see Williams produce an average chassis with the infamous hammerhead nose, which brought no performance benefits and was dropped when Ralph re returned for the 
inaugural Chinese Grand Prix, starting the season with four points finishes in the opening seven rounds. Canada saw Ralph Clinch Paul and finished second behind Brennan Michael, only to have his result rescinded thanks to his brake ducts being found to be too large. He would rack up his only podium of 2004 with second at Japan, but Ralph had had enough with Williams's poor progress and moved to Toyota for 2005. Number 9, Jake Carlin Fisichella, C+. 2004 was a satisfying year for the 31-year-old Italian who finally had the opportunity to drive a reliable car. Despite this, Fissy failed to register a point in the first four rounds, but once Sauber began to reap the benefits of their 100% size wind tunnel, the Italian could not stop scoring. A highlight of this year was his drive at Britain, where he claimed sixth after starting last. Felipe Massa proved to be little threat whatsoever as Fizzy Keller outscored him 22 points to 12. As a reward for the Romans' excellent displays, Fizzy landed a seat at Renault for 2005. 8. Yardo Trudy, B minus. 2004 had all the ingredients to be a sublime season for Trulli, but his relationship with Flavio Briatore fell apart after being caught napping on the final lap by Rubens Barrichello at Manicourt. It's rare for a Grand Prix winner to be sacked in the same season, but that was the fate of Yano in this campaign. From winning at Monaco, the 30-year-old Italian was handed his marching orders at Monza. The first half of the season showed Trulli a scintillating best, outpacing his highly lounded teammate Fernando Alonso and his new found consistency made some believe Trulli had turned over a new leaf. Sadly, the Italian never scored again after his French debacle and signed a late season deal to join Toyota, with Trulli driving the final two races of 2004 for the Japanese team. 7. Mark Webber, B-. minus. The 28-year-old Australian endured a second, difficult second season at Jaguar as Ford's commitment was waned dramatically and Webber was left forlorn with little to show for his mighty speed. He equalled his best career-best qualifying position of third twice at Sapang and Suzuka but core issues saw him retire from both a wet fence, with the latter leaving the Quebec native requiring medical treatment. Scoring just seven points, Weber once again crushed his teammate, with Christian Clean doing little to worry him all season. With the Milton Keynes future uncertain when Ford announced he would be looking for a buyer near the season's end, Weber signed a deal to race for Williams in 2005. Number 6. Juan Pablo Montoya B. 2004 was an apathetic season for the Colombian, who had already shifted his focus to 2005 when it was announced late the previous season that Montoya had signed a contract with McLaren. That apathy was intensified further when it was obvious Williams's FW26 chassis was uncompetitive and difficult to drive, with teammate Ralf Schumacher sidelined with vertebrae fractures mid-season. Montoya became team leader and did, but did find himself outqualified by Antonio Pizzoni at Hungary, despite the Colombian carrying less fuel. Eventually, Van Pablo ended his final season at Williams with victory at Interlagos and clinched. 5th place in the driver's standings after scoring 58 points. 5. Fernando Alonso B. 2004 was more of a quiet season for Spain's rising hero, who struggled early on as he was outpaced by resurgent teammate Yano Trulli. However, Manucor saw a dramatic reversal of fortunes as pole position and second place for the 23-year-old Oviedo native was in stark contrast to his Italian teammate losing a podium on the final lap to Barrichello. Despite Re Renault struggling with a more conventional 72 degree engine based on their old title winning specs from the 1990s, 
Alonso would pick up four podiums but ended the year winners. That left doubts on whether Alonso was capable of beating new teammate Jane Carlo Fisichella in the following season. Four. Kimi Raikkonen, B+. Plus, expected a mount of more intense title challenge for 2004 it was pertinent when McLaren's MP419 first ran in practice at Melbourne that the 24-year-old Finn was in major trouble. Suffering five engine blowouts in the opening seven races, there were concerns over whether offers from rival teams might distract Raikkonen, but the new B-spec chassis rescued a Woking-based team's year. Scoring pole position and second at Silverstone was a harbinger of what came next, which was a fortuitous victory at Sparks Frankershom for the Iceman. Four podiums, however, was a paltry return for the highly rated Finn, and eyes were set on the prospect of a sizzling rivalry between Kimi and new teammate Montoya for 2005. Number three, Rubens Barrichello, B+. Despite venerated teammate Michael Schumacher entering 2004 with nothing left to achieve after wrapping his sixth world title during the previous year, Rubens was still stuck as a number two. Whilst the jovial Brazilian claimed he now had a better chance than ever of fighting for a championship, despite producing his statistically most successful year at the Prancing Horse, he was still not a threat to Michael. Two wins... Four podiums and fourteen, uh, two wins, four pole positions, fourteen podiums was a respectable display, but it did nothing to stop his German teammate advancing towards his seventh crown. Two, Jensen Button A, entering his fifth season without, still without a podium, the twenty-four-year-old freight from. Native finally broke his duck at Sapang, where he held off Barrichello in the closing laps. Ten podiums was a fine return for Button, who impressed critics and his reputation of being a playboy was finally beginning to diminish. Scoring 85 points, he finished 26 points ahead of Fernando Alonso to clinch a well-deserved third in the championship, but mid-season would witness a bizarre development occur. News broke out at Hungary that Jensen had announced his intentions to return to Williams despite BAR's astonishing progress. It was left to the FIA Contract Recognition Board to resolve matters, ruling that the Brackley-based team had priority and the Britain would have to race for the Honda Power team in 2005. Highlights of a glorious breakthrough season include Botany securing his maiden pole at Imola, hounding Yarno Trudy for victory at Monaco, holding his helmet strap in place at Hockenheim whilst holding off Alonso for second and chasing Barrichello at China. Number one, Michael Schumacher, A+. There are simply insufficient superlatives to describe Schumacher's five-year domination with Ferrari in the early 2000s breaking his own record for wins in a season with 13 during 2004. The 35-year-old entered the season with 83 career wins in total. Melbourne would witness Schumacher and Barrichello destroy the opposition without a bead of sweat and it set the tone of the remainder of the campaign. The two the F2004 was not only fast, but it was incredibly reliable and user-friendly. Thanks to the work of John Todd, Ross Broad, Rory Byrne and many illustrious technical minds, the Made in Italy brand reigned supreme. The likes of Hakkinen, Coulthard, Raikkonen and Montoya had tried with all their soul and spirit to defeat the Marinero boys. However, only Kimi Raikkonen succeeded to drag Michael Schumacher towards a final race decided in the previous year during the early 2000s. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe to Crystal Racing, please share this video and I'll see you again next time.